Prospect is looking for a toe coming up to the corner from down on the inside. Fortunate Lassie and Von Coney still last of all with about 500 still left to travel. Long overdue doing it comfortably in front from Flying Image and now Russian River pulling to the outside for McGruddy about to loom up and make a line of three at the top of the home straight. Licence lad down on the inside will get the cutaway shortly if good enough and they're being followed by the Blue Nipper and Medom switching back inside of heels going by the 200 though Russian River ranged alongside of Long Overdue. They beat off Flying Image Bachelor's Prospect is coming down the outside. Medom's got a late run near the rail. And now coming here, the Blue Nipper. The Blue Nipper, Russian River. They go to the line. The Blue Nipper. The Blue Nipper has got his beak in front right on the line and just one from Russian River or Bachelor's Prospect. And close up is Medom. In behind them came Long Overdue, Flying Image together. In behind those, Licensed Lad, then Von Coney. And dropping out, Fortunate Lassie has brought up the tail end of the field. Number one is the winner, the Blue Nipper. Ridden by Brad Parnham. 8.50 out to 11s, back to 9.50 at the crunch. Has run last in both starts this uh, campaign in a 65 and then a, a 72 Raider. Neville Parnham threw him back into a 56 class race today, 56 benchmark. And uh, this has rebounded and uh, cracked it after a lengthy run of outs, the Blue Nipper. Under the 59 with the class drop, Brad Parnham, the Alfred Nobel, Lady Yasmin Gelding, Verona Colin Loxton, grabbing Russian River. Sean McGruddy pulled out after leaving that lovely trail to get up, joined the two leaders on the point of the corner and gobbled up right on the post. And uh, Medom and Bachelor's Prospect were also closing in on that margin. They made it pretty tight for the miners. Won the Blue Nipper though first. Number one, Brad Parnham, $9.20, $2.50. Waiting for the judge to confirm the minor details. Long overdue, Flying Image made the corner together. Flying Image probably went just a touch too keenly. First up at the 1400 and laboured. And the stable mate closed in eventually on Russian River. Bachelor's Prospect putting a dive in on the outside. The judge still yet to place these numbers up onto the infield semaphore. They're there now though, 1725. The Blue Nipper, Bachelor's Prospect, Russian River and Medom. In the third, the Get the Tab Touch Handicap. So the third win in 17 runs for the Blue Nipper, but uh, about 320 days thereabouts since its last victory. And rebounds after uh, running in a couple of uh, much higher rated class races in this preparation to date. Now the fourth is the Devil's Lair Handicap, 1,100 metres for the three-year-olds. And at... 310 they'll go number eight miss swindle is the scratching it's a field of nine well nev parnham's turned it around here today for uh, his uh, stable client a long time uh, client of the stable colin loxton and uh, neville's down there with mark olmus after the victory thank you darren i've got neville parnham down here Neville, uh, great to see the Blue Nipper back in the winner's circle after a couple of disappointing runs this preparation. Uh, you mentioned you changed his training up. Uh, what have you done exactly? Uh, we just introduced quite a bit of swimming into him and, he, and um, yeah, just increased the workload. Um, he had actually galloped this morning and just, yeah, just been pulling up a bit big in his, in his races, so um, not showing a lot of interest. So we'd, we'd been, um, yeah, just doing a few things different with him and it, um, uh, it seems to have worked with him, yeah. Now, we'll you had a close look at him as he's walking back here to the winning uh, winning yard here. Now, what did you notice there? You had a really close look at him. Uh, to be honest with you, he had a bar shoe on him. Uh, he's had it for his last start as well. He had a little bit of a sore heel there a couple of weeks back and um, we had to put one on him. But uh, actually, I thought he'd, uh, they'd come off, but uh, it's, it's actually on. So, uh, um, but yeah, that, that seems to have coped with that all right. So uh, hopefully he can, uh, can continue the form and and win a couple more races. Never the other galloper in there, flying image. What did you make of its run? Just went too slow for him. Yeah, just unfortunately that horse, the drawing inside of him, who's got the speed, basically controlled the tempo, but uh, would have probably liked a bit more pace in the race. He likes it a bit better like that. But um, He was 14 first up, but you know, I thought he was fit enough. I haven't had a look at him yet, but... Uh, um, I was slightly disappointed with him. Yeah. Neville, looking at Saturday, you've got Bass straight in. Now, missed the scale last week after the Kingston Town. What do you make of his chances this weekend? Uh, drawing a barrier is going to certainly help him. Um, he's run third in the race the last two years. so um, And they've been really good runs behind some very good horses, uh, Elite Bell and um, 
uh, Red Blast, and last year was Perfect Reflections and Neverland, so and like close finishes too. So if he can re find that form, which I think take out his last run, he's certainly at that form level. So he's worked yesterday. Chris worked him yesterday, and he he worked really well. So um, just felt that coming back to 1400 last Saturday and. Just didn't think he was quite at his best last week to be taken on the likes of sprinters like Vega Magic. So we uh, stepped the tempo up again and uh, progressing to the 21. Neville, good signs moving forward. Best of luck for the rest of the day and, of course, on Saturday. Yeah, excellent. Thanks. Neville Parnham joining us there. And Brad Parnham comes over for a chat. He's got a couple of... Uh very handy supporters there with the kids. Well done, Brad. Now, this galloper, you jumped a little bit tardily and then uh, you were sat to settle wide, but Bachelor's Prospect Jason Whiting let you in, which was a blessing in disguise in the end. Yeah, I mean, the race actually worked out really well for me. I I knew he probably wouldn't get out the best, but he came out even a little bit slower than I thought. Um, so I didn't have to... I just didn't want to panic. I just wanted to sort of get into a spot where, where I was comfortable. And even if that was three deep, that's where I was going to be. But uh, fortunately... Um, Clint Johnson Porter, he went to the fence, so it just allowed room for me to get him behind um, Sean McGrady's horse, and he gave me a beautiful card up into the race, and uh, he finished it off strong, mine. Now, your father just mentioned, he's had a few issues. How did he feel in the run there? Did he feel it as if he can go on with it now? Yeah, he felt pretty good. Um, he got into a good rhythm today. He, he's a horse with a lot of tricks too, you know. Um, he's A lot of it's in his mind. I mean, the horse might not have been going his best anyway, but still, he's a very tricky horse to ride, so you just got to get him traveling nice in in his own comfort zone and and if you can do that then then he'll put his best foot forward brad well done and good luck for the rest of the day thanks mate Ta. brad parnham there winning jockey a, a good start to the day for the parnhams there the next race is race number four